Even without access to television, phones, or social media, people from the Victorian era still managed to keep themselves busy with numerous hobbies. Many of these hobbies may seem odd or macabre to people today, but people from that time had a different relationship with nature and death than they do today. People's connection with death during the Victorian era meant they even took photos of their deceased family members as keepsakes. This video will tell you all about the weird and creepy hobbies people took part in during the Victorian era. Welcome to Crazy Histories, where we bring you the craziest and weirdest facts from human history. Some of the things discussed in this video may be offensive or disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Vignettes and freak shows were highly popular. We luckily realize things people found funny in the Victorian era today are hurtful and mean. But in the Victorian era in England and the United States, the popularity of freak shows was on the rise. A freak show exploited people with biological rarities and deformities. Customers paid the freak show money to laugh at those with the disabilities. Unfortunately for most of these so-called freaks, freak shows were the only way to support their families and make money. Examples of the freaks of nature that freak shows would feature were the lobster boy, the dog-faced girl, the bearded woman, and the living human skeleton. Before TikTok, Victorian-era ancestors had fun with a similar hobby. During the Victorian era, there was no television, movie theaters were gaining popularity, and radio did not exist. There were hobbies such as reading, games, and sewing, but another popular hobby in the 19th century was making vignettes. Friends and family members dressed in fun costumes would make silly poses to elicit laughter and applause in the vignette. Vignettes paved the way for the technology to make the first moving picture. Some people also believed the birth of comic strips and newspapers was a reason for the decline of vignettes. Today, taxidermy is usually reserved for deer heads mounted on the walls of hunters and preserving the body of a deceased loved pet. In the Victorian era, taxidermy was a hobby that most people took part in. Anthropomorphic taxidermy is what taxidermists from the Victorian era were interested in. With this type of taxidermy, animals were stuffed, mounted, and dressed in human clothing. The Victorian era was a time of nature and fantasy, and anthropomorphic taxidermy was a way for people to bring these two things together. No matter your opinion on taxidermy, no one can refute the fact it's a complex and meticulous work. A famous taxidermist of this era was Walter Potter. Scenes he recreated with taxidermied animals include kittens playing games and rabbits in a classroom. Obsession with Death in the Victorian Era Back in the Victorian era, there were not many public parks, so cemeteries were the closest thing people had to them. The lush, green grass of cemeteries were the perfect place for people to picnic and relax outside. New York's Greenwood Cemetery saw half a million picnickers per year during the Victorian era. As weird and morbid as this practice may seem today, in the Victorian era, death was an ever-present reality no matter someone's age. With diseases like chlorella and tuberculosis killing children and adults, people spent time in cemeteries during the 19th century, so it made sense to dine there too. A seance today is usually associated with a Ouija board. During the Victorian era, though, a seance was a significant event. Spiritualism, a type of religion popular during the Victorian era, gained popularity in the late 19th century. Those who believed in spiritualism thought the living and dead could communicate with each other. Victorian women held seances at home and the homes of psychic mediums. The mediums would use stage tricks to talk with the person's loved one. The mediums used parlor tricks like coughing up blood and plasma, summoning a hand, and levitating tables. Queen Victoria and Prince Albert took part in a seance in the 1840s. After Prince Albert died in 1861, a teenage boy passed a statement to the Queen sent from the Prince. According to the Queen, the message used the secret pet name the Prince made up for her. Probably the creepiest hobby of the Victorian era was the practice of post-mortem photography. Death was rampant during the 19th century with the threat of disease everywhere. Modern medicine wasn't around and people were unaware of the effects of bacteria and viruses. No one was safe from the danger of death during the 19th century either, and the life expectancy was no older than 40. 
Although today these pictures seem creepy and morbid, back in the Victorian era, they were meant to comfort the grieving, similar to jewelry. Photographers sometimes arranged for the deceased subject to look as if they were peacefully sleeping. By doing that, the photographer would comfort a grieving family, especially the family of a baby or a young child. Some photographers would offer to apply realistic makeup to the deceased or paint their eyes to give them a lifelike appearance. The Victorian people were one with nature. Exotic plants were another thing people showed an interest in during the Victorian era. Most gardens were filled with exotic plants, while clothing and jewelry were mostly botanical themed. Pteridomania, otherwise known as fern fever, was the process of cultivating ferns. People from the Victorian era would travel to Europe and Asia on dangerous expeditions in search of ferns to bring home. The ferns were then placed in terrariums, then called Mordian cases. Ferns weren't the only plant people in the Victorian era were obsessed with. They loved seaweed, too. After collecting seaweed from the beach, people would paste them on pieces of construction paper. The seaweed fragments would be arranged in creative designs, or they could be glued to spell words. Scrapbookers would frame their masterpieces by boarding them with pieces of lace. It's human nature to want to know what the future has in store. Since ancient times, people have used reflective surfaces to try and see their destiny. During the Victorian era, gazing into crystals to see what was in store regained popularity. Crystals like amethysts, glass orbs, crystal walls, and mirrors were all used by gazers to see what was in the subconscious mind. Elaborate rituals and rules came with the practice of crystal gazing. For example, the best time to gaze at the crystals was when the sun was at its most northern point. Floriography, the language of flowers, was a way for people in the Victorian era to send messages to each other with secret meanings. When a bouquet of flowers would arrive at someone's house in the 19th century, the person would pick up the floriography book to decode the meaning behind the flowers. Daffodils were sent to someone as a message of unrequited love. If someone were to receive daisies, it would mean innocence or purity. Roses like today symbolized true love. Pink carnations represented gratitude and thanks, and yellow carnations symbolized rejection. Not all flowers sent had love messages. A bouquet of oleanders meant revenge or forewarning of death. Creating memento mores like jewelry woven from hair. Ancient Egyptians were the first ones to practice the art of making jewelry by hair. The odd hobby grew popular again during the Victorian era. A jeweler would string pieces of hair through pieces of jewelry like rings, bracelets, and necklaces. Hair given to someone by a loved one was an important symbol of love and trust. Sometimes hair from a deceased loved one was woven into an ornament and given to those grieving. During the Victorian era, the trend of hair jewelry rose to popularity again because Queen Victoria wore it to mourn her lost family. Initially, hair jewelry was only for the wealthy, but soon women began making hair jewelry at home. Women would talk in small groups while weaving hair jewelry together. Another reason women would make hair jewelry at home is that they didn't trust the jewelers. Many women believed that the hair they would receive in the jewelers was not the hair from their loved ones. Instead, they would do it at home to ensure the hair was the hair of the person they lost. Some advertisements for hair jewelers specifically read that they used pieces of hair that the customers gave them, but that only added the suspicion. Although not common, hair jewelry is still made in some countries today. A memento mori, a reminder of death or remember you must die, was a way for people of the Victorian era to honor the dead, while reminding themselves that they too will die one day. In addition to taking photos of the dead and making jewelry pieces from their hair, death masks were another popular memento mori. A death mask was another way to remember the deceased. A mask maker would spread oil over the face of the dead loved one before placing plaster over it. Like most Victorian era hobbies, death masks were invented during this time. It was another practice dating back to ancient times. Death masks would be placed atop fireplaces and mantles in 19th century homes. Death wasn't feared during the Victorian era as it's feared today. Instead, in the 19th century, people accepted death as a part of life, a new death would come for them one day. Not all hobbies during the 19th century were considered weird or different. Leisure activities like cycling, horseback riding, and rowing were popular hobbies that people still do today. Horse racing and sailboat racing were the popular events from that era people attended. Of course, the most remembered activities from that time are the ones we today consider creepy. 
If you enjoyed this video about the sad truth about the weirdest hobbies during the Victorian era, click the like and subscribe buttons for more crazy history stories where we bring you the craziest and weirdest facts from human history.